Hey guys, Matt here today getting back into John chapter 1. And last time we talked about Jesus uh, being the Word of God and the Word became flesh and dwelt or tabernacled among us. And we talked about how it's always been a, a tabernacle experience. It's always been about God revealing Himself and no one ever listened. But then God reveals Himself through Himself, through His Son, Jesus. He puts on human flesh. He, he dwells among us. He dwelt among us. And grace and truth came through Him. The law came through Moses. No one could keep it. Grace and truth came through Jesus. He's the only one who can. In Christ, we have grace upon grace. Grace is lavished upon us by being in Christ. And then we get to verse 19. And this is the Apostle John talking about John the Baptist. So there's two Johns. John 1.19, And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? So the Jews wanted to find out who is this guy. It's this weirdo in the desert, baptizing people, speaking without a filter. Uh, you'll see that coming up. Calling out sin. Telling people they need to get right because the one they've been waiting for is coming. Who are you? Verse 20, he confessed, and he did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you a prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Well, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John answered, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, this is interesting because he quotes, he says he's not Elijah, first of all. All right, well, we're going to look at that. He doesn't know everything. As a prophet, he's not given everything. He knows he's, he's got a special job, but he doesn't even call himself a prophet. What's going on? Well, I think John is doing something interesting here. So, as a prophet, he doesn't have all the details. But he knows that these are coming, these Jews are coming, and they've got hard hearts, and they would, they're not going to recognize the Christ, even if they have all the clues. So John says, no, I'm not Christ, which is true. He says, no, I'm not Elijah, which is actually false. He is Elijah. No, I'm not a prophet. He is a prophet. But instead, he says, I'm just one crying in the wilderness, and he quotes Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 40, verse 3, he quotes Isaiah, and they're supposed to say, ah, that's right, Isaiah prophesied about this guy, this guy is crying out, someone's coming right after him, that's what's supposed to happen, but it doesn't happen, because Jesus came to his own, and his own didn't recognize him. Verse 24, Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize you with water, but among you stands one who you do not know, even he who comes after me, the straps of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place at Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. So John says, I've been sent to baptize, but I'm only baptizing with water. There is one. There's one standing among you. And then he adds something. Whom you do not know. Hmm. All right, so let's unpack this. So, is or is John not the Elijah that was to come? Well, it's interesting. So Elijah, if you remember, was one of the only people in the Bible who didn't have to die. He just got sucked up in a chariot of fire, gave his cloak to Elisha, if you remember the story, and the Jews had been waiting for the Elijah that was to come. This is interesting because the Old Testament was filled with types and shadows which are fulfilled in Christ. All of the promises of God find their yes in Christ. You could say in Christ and or the gospel event, the whole gospel event of the Christ. So you have, for example, you have Adam, and then you have the last Adam, the better Adam, the best Adam, Jesus. You have Moses, think Deuteronomy 18. Then you've got the better than Moses, Jesus. You've got the Old Testament version of Saul, who's a terrible king. 
He's not even from the right tribe. He's not from Judah. He's from Benjamin, the same tribe that killed the Levite's concubine and chopped her up into 12 pieces. Remember that story? That's the tribe he's from. It. But then you've got a New Testament version of Saul, also from Benjamin, also a pretty bad dude, killing Christians, and then he meets the Christ. What about this Elijah? Well, there's an Old Testament Elijah, and then there's a New Testament version of Elijah, Elijah 2.0. And so it's talked about in Malachi. It's prophesied in Malachi. The Spirit of Christ speaks through Malachi the prophet 400 and some years before Jesus comes. And he says this, Malachi 4, verse 5, Behold, this is, now you got to listen to exactly how this is written. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet when? The, before the great and awesome day of the Lord. I'm going to send Elijah before, before the day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. Elijah to come, the second Elijah, the, the better Elijah, the last Elijah, the new covenant Elijah, was going to come and he was going to make the children their hearts match up with their parents. They're going to make the children obey their parents and the parents draw close to their children. In other words, he was going to prepare the way for the Lord. He was going to prepare the way for the Christ. He was going to get the hearts ready. He was going to till up the soil for the one to come who could actually change the heart. Right? And so John says something peculiar. He says, no, I'm not the Elijah. But Jesus, in Matthew 11... He says something a little different. Jesus in Matthew 11, <clears throat> he says, verse 11, 11, 11, Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied about John. And if you are willing to accept it, here Jesus slips into the spiritual, if you're willing to accept it, he, John, is the Elijah who is to come. He who has ears, let him hear. Jesus is revealing a clue and he's saying, if you have ears to hear this, grab it. If not, just keep walking in darkness. He says this in Matthew 17, also after the transfiguration, he says, then he's asked, well, then why do the scribes First say that Elijah must come, and, and Jesus answers him, Elijah does come, and he will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also the Son of Man will certainly suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood he was speaking of John the Baptist. So John the Baptist is the Elijah that is to come. His job, get people ready because the Christ is coming. And so when the Christ comes, the day of the Lord is ushered in. Remember Malachi 4, Elijah will come before the great day of the Lord. The day of the Lord has already come. We need to know that the most significant thing that has ever happened in the history of the world has already happened. Jesus has already come. Jesus already died for the sins of those who will worship him. Jesus has already been resurrected. Jesus is already ruling and reigning. We're not waiting for him to rule and reign. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the one who comes and dies for the sins of the world, for those that will worship him. The affliction that is talked about, the, the tribulation, it's already happening. All of that happened when Jesus came, when Jesus died, when Jesus rose. Think about how the apostles all died, except for John. He died of tribulation. The day of the Lord has already come in Christ. The day of the Lord is coming currently as we share the gospel and people come into the kingdom. And the day of the Lord will come in fruition, in completion, 
when he returns the second time. It's an already not yet proposition. It's already happened. It's happening and it will happen completely, finally, fully when Jesus returns. That's what John was doing. He was preparing the way for Christ. He was preparing the way for the day of the Lord. So that day has already come. That is really good news for us. We're not waiting for Jesus to rule and reign. He's already ruling and reigning. Now you might say, okay, if Jesus is ruling, why is there death? And why is there cancer? And why is there rape and torture and murder and wars and all of these things because of us, because of sin? So even though Jesus already dealt with sin definitively on the cross, we're living in this already, not yet. We're, really, we're living in this already. He's already ruling and reigning, and we're already the recipients of that. We're already seated with Him in heavenly places right now in the spirit, in the spiritual realm. But there's coming a time when He's going to come back and finish it. It's like I've heard a commentator say, like in World War II, after Germany was already defeated, the war was already declared to be over, but there's still all these outlying mop-up operations. There's still little battles going on here and there. That's what it's like now. The big battle already won. That's what John was doing. He was preparing people for the day of the Lord when that big battle would be won definitively when Jesus is raised from the cross, raised from, the, from, his, from his tomb, raised from the dead. And so we live in this side where it's already happened but we still have stuff that we don't like. We still have stuff that isn't how it's supposed to be, how it will be when Jesus comes back. So that's where we are today. We're in the already and we're waiting for the not yet. That's what John was doing. John was preparing them for the way of the Lord. He was preparing them for the one who would win the battle definitively by dying on the cross. John was the Elijah to come. He's already come. Jesus was, is, the Son of God, the Son of Man. He's already come. He's already ruling and reigning. We need to put our hope and trust in Him and Him alone. And when He does come back, He will know His sheep. He will call them home. And all the rest, unfortunately, will have to deal with His wrath. Peace.